Welcome to Irondale Brewing. Today we're going to do flash brewing. This is a more beer flash brewing kit. It is empty because I already did it. Uh, but um, I did want to talk, I'll do a little bit of an intro before I show you the process itself. Uh, the concept with this, if you aren't aware, and I'll put links in the description to more beers information about it, um, is uh, basically if you have 10 minutes and this kit and a fermenter and five gallons of water, you can make beer. Um, and it's an interesting concept. Um, I will say that in, I'm going to do a second part of this video in the future where I do the tasting, I'm going to go more into kind of like where I think this fits into the overall brewing world. But I do like the innovation of it. I like the fact that, because the biggest time commitment for brewing, let's face it, is the brew day. Everything else is kind of like you're waiting around or you need an hour here or there to do stuff. That brew day, especially if you're doing all grain, or I'd say even extract with steeping grains, that's a chunk of time. Um, and it's a big commitment that some people just don't have time for. So to me, I think this is an interesting concept. It's an innovative way to try and get people into brewing who don't have a half a day uh, or more <laughs> to commit to brewing. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm really, I'm going to be really curious how the results come out. Um, and so I think I'm just going to stop there for now since I'll talk more about kind of where I think this fits in in the next video when we do a tasting uh, and we'll just go right into the process. And here is the flash brewing kit. This is the Citrus Session Pale Ale. Uh, you can see the flash brewing logo. I don't know how well this is gonna focus, but flash brewing logo all over the box. It's a nice box, nice heavy box. Has some information on the side here too. Uh, flash brewing kit for more beer, no boiling required, uh, which is kind of the key of this uh, process to cut drastically down uh, the amount of time you spend on your brew day. So I'll get that centered a little bit. Better. Uh, so, Citrus Session Pale Ale, easy drinking beer with light color and moderate ABV, 4.9%. You can see there, um, all about the citrus and tropical flavors that made Citra Hops famous in the craft brewing scene. Um, and again, no boiling required. I will say, as a random aside, I've made more beers uh, extract uh, Citrus Session Pale Ale kit, and it is really good. Um, it's super easy to make, and it was the end results were fantastic. I, I often say that's my lowest effort, best results beer that I've probably made in recent memory. Um, so I'm hoping this is similar. Uh, the the um, extract kit does come with specialty grains. This does not, as we'll see when I open the box here in a second. Uh, so it's a little bit different, but I'm just saying, um, if it's anything like that, I think this will be good results, and they've lowered the effort uh, involved with the brew process down to as low as you can possibly get it without just going and buying beer, I think. So, all right, let's crack the box open and see what's in here. All right, so we have a nice printed kit sheet here. And if you've had more beers kits before, this is uh, this will look familiar to you. Uh, but they do include a tap handle uh, cutout, which is kind of cool. If you have one of the tap handles, it'll fit that sort of thing. Um, and then it basically tells you what's in here. And in this kit, we have the flash malt Session Pale Ale, five pounds, hops, and it comes with two different things, Hop Bite, which is a 30 IBU shot. So that's just general bitterness for the beer, no specific type, um, and we'll see what that looks like in a second. And then two ounces of Citra Cryo Hops. And then the Flash Yeast, and let's get social. Um, okay, and then on the back, we've got the instructions, but I'll go over those in a second. Let's just kind of see what's in the box first. Okay, so I'll just kind of grab what's on top here. You have a hop bite shot 30. So that's 30 IBUs in a five gallon batch. And again, this is just generic bitterness. Um, you know, I don't know what they used to make these. Um, Magnum, that sort of thing where it's just kind of like, yeah, that's hop bitterness, but it's not, doesn't have a lot of kind of hop specific variety characteristics. Uh, the interesting thing to note here is that it does say it's specially processed, uh, you know, without the need to boil, of course. Uh, but that it's impervious to light. So the idea here that they're trying to do with some of these, uh, with these flash brewing kits as well is to basically say you can ferment in something clear uh, and you can even package in clear bottles and it won't get skunked or light struck because they've, you, the bitterness comes from this. I don't know how true that is. I'm going to do my usual process as far as those sorts of things go. Uh, but interesting uh, thing. And in their videos, to uh, interesting thing to point out, in their videos they show bottling in clear bottles. So that's kind of interesting. So this is eight milliliters of hop oil. And you can see the syringe there. Basically, you'll just shoot that in there when you're ready to make it. Hold on, I want to put that on there because I'll need that in a second. And then two ounces of Yakima Chief 
Citra Cryo Hops. Excellent. Very cool. And then back here we have the Flash Yeast. Um, don't know what this is. Uh, a lot of people speculate it's some flavor of Kvike, which is probably a fair guess given the temperature range they list is 65 to 85. 85 would be darn warm for kind of US05 kind of type yeast. Um, so Kvike's probably a good guess. It's got 12 grams in there. It should be great for this sort of kit. Uh, it says carefully selected for rapid fermentation. Uh, let's just read the back here. Uh, it says it's instrumental in ensuring consistent success for flash brewing beer. Neutral flavor profile, uh, rapidly initiating fermentation, performs well across a wide range of temperatures. So again, it's designed for this sort of kit. Don't know what it is. Doesn't matter. We're just going to make the kit. And I assume that they've made this uh, such that it will work well with this kit. Uh, and then the big bag here is Citrus Session Pale Ale Flash Malt. Try to grab this and bring it up a little bit closer. Okay, so this is two-row barley malt, and this is DME, obviously. Two-row barley malt blended with a touch of carapils. That's good. To produce a classic pale ale malt base. Citrus Session Flash Malt is mashed, whirlpooled for clarity, and spray-dried. No boiling required. So it's DME. It's apparently a little bit different than traditional DME um, that's designed for this sort of brewing. I do like the fact that it has little carapils in there so that, again, they've kind of combined. If, you, you know, normal extract kit like this, you steep some grains. Um, they've kind of added the carapils in here uh, instead of just having it be two row DME uh, and with nothing else. And I think the processing is apparently a little bit different in theory uh, to work with this kind of brewing uh, where you aren't going to boil it. So anyway, that's what's in the box. Let's look at the instructions. So before you start, you need five gallons of good uh, or clean, good tasting water. If you're watching this video, you probably know a little bit about brewing water. Um, most tap water will have chlorine or chloramine in it. If you can't taste and smell it very strongly, it's probably fine to use that. But they do recommend, and this is what I did, uh, buying five gallons of water. Or if you have an RO filter like I do, um, you could use RO. Um, I just bought five bottles of spring water. I'm going to use that. Makes it easy. And then you do need a fermenter. This can be anything. You want a six to seven gallon fermenter. I bought a, because I'm used to making 2.5 gallon kits. Uh, so I bought a seven gallon for Monster uh, that I'm going to use. And I'm going to do my normal thing with the uh, modified lid with the gas post on it. I'm going to use my fermentation chamber to keep the temperature stable. Um, so that'll be a little bit different than the instructions. Uh, and then I am going to cold crash and keg it, which I'm going out of bounds a little bit, but I think as far as the making it process. I'm going to keep that as uh, close to these as, as I can. Uh, so basically, and I won't read this to you. You can probably find these online. Clean and sanitize. Um, sanitize your all your stuff that's going to touch the beer. Um, add starting water. So step three there, it says add three gallons of, um, of your water to your fermenter. So not the full five. And then it just says add all ingredients. Use sanitized scissors, cut up in the yeast, malt blend powder, hot bite, etc. I'm a little bit, it's a little bit interesting. They don't specify an order. I'll think about that. I, maybe it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, something about putting the yeast in uh, other than last bothered me, but again, probably doesn't matter. And I suppose this next step really will show you it doesn't matter. You add three gallons, throw the stuff in the fermenter, and then you add the other two gallons, which is going to obviously mix the stuff up. So you don't need to stir, you don't need to shake it. You're just putting three gallons in, dumping the uh, ingredients in, and dumping another two gallons in, and then attach an airlock. And then um, it says place at room temperature. I mentioned this already, but between 65 and 85. Ideally, you want that to be as stable as possible. If you have a normal, you know, air-conditioned house, uh, it's probably fine. Um, you got a basement that's cool that stays relatively stable temperature-wise. Because even though that rain, there's that range in there, yeast tends to not like fluctuations. Once you get it going, it's like the more stable, the better. Um, so you don't want to... If, if, say, you live somewhere like I do where it gets... Well, it gets too cold this time of year, even though it's July, but... If you put it in a room, you know, yeah, I got a back sunroom, sunroom in the morning at 60 and at the end of the day it's 80, probably not ideal. You want to put it somewhere where it's going to be stable, um, if at all possible. And then basically it says when the bubbling in your airlock stops, you're done. I don't think that's a good recommendation. I would say just wait 14 days. Then you are for sure uh, that the fermentation is done, especially since this says it's a fast-acting yeast and, and whatnot. And then the rest of the instructions are just basically how to package it, which we'll get there eventually. But um, anyway, that's what's in the kit. So we will see how this goes when we uh, throw it all together in a minute. 
apologies for the weird setup. I'm in the process of completely reorganizing the brewery. So there's stuff in weird places and I'm kind of over in a corner. Won't be this way forever, but uh, thanks for being with me through this. I did want to talk just for a minute about fermenters because this is the thing we're going to dump the flash kit into. And if you haven't brewed before, a fermenter is basically just anything that will hold the volume of liquid that you need to ferment. So it can be as simple as a bucket like this. The only thing I'll say is get food grade. Uh, this one happens to be from, well, more wine or more beer, same company. Um, so just make sure and get a food grade bucket. This one I think is six and a half gallons. If you're going to use a bucket like this, you would need a lid and an airlock, which I'll talk about in the context of this thing. Uh, this is a Fermonster fermenter. It's a seven gallon uh, model. It does have a spigot that goes here that I haven't put in there yet. We'll see that in a minute. And you do need, um, as it said in the instructions for the flash kit, an airlock. And if you're not familiar with this, basically the lid has a hole in it. You put a stopper in there. This, this is the airlock and you fill that with sanitizer. Some people use vodka, even water is probably okay, but I'd go with sanitizer at least. Um, and basically just lets the carbon dioxide being produced as you ferment come out without air, oops, <laughs> without air or other stuff getting back in. So again, fermenter doesn't have to be fancy. Um, I think this one, I want to say this is like $60 uh, for this Fermonster. Um, buckets are more like, I don't know how much this particular bucket was, but again, if you go to Home Depot, just make sure and look for food grade. That's important, but they may be eight, 10 bucks, something like that. You don't need a spigot. It makes stuff easier, um, as we'll see in probably part two of this. Uh, but anyway, fermenter, bucket's good. Don't have to spend a lot of money. Keep it simple, especially if you're just getting started with stuff and uh, you just need something to hold your liquid. I want to talk just for a minute about how to sanitize and the importance of sanitizing your fermenter. Basically, what you're going to dump in your fermenter is a bunch of sugar water. Um, and if you don't get, have good sanitization practices, um, th the problem is you could get unwanted bacteria consuming that sugar instead of the yeast fungus that you want <laughs> uh, consuming your consuming your work. So um, basically, simple enough process, but I filled this uh, for Monster up to the five gallon mark. Uh, sorry, it's down here. Um, and then put an ounce of this star sand in there. And again, if you're an experienced home brewer, you probably already know all about, all about this stuff. But for people who maybe haven't done this before, uh, which may be a target audience for the flash brewing, um, pick up this stuff. It's the easiest uh, thing I've found to use. It is a food grade acid uh, sanitizer. And basically it just makes the environment uh, pH inhospitable to bacteria. So it sanitizes stuff quick and easy um, to use, short contact time of about three minutes, just get everything wet. I will probably shake this again since it's been settling a little bit. Um, and then it is a good environment in which to start the brewing process. So uh, that's super, super important. If there is one thing that you need to be <laughs> pay a lot of attention to in your brewing process, it's cleaning and sanitizing. Uh, and then the other thing I'll mention, if you do this for a monster like this, get a closed lid. So this is the only thing I use it for is, is shaking uh, the sanitizer around in here, but it is worth its weight in gold. Um, you know, you could, I guess, do secondary longer ferments in this if uh, you wanted to with a closed lid, but that's all I use it for. So anyway, make sure to sanitize all your stuff because if you dump uh, that flash kit into a fermenter that's not sanitized, you are not going to get good results. All right, another thing to know about star sand is don't fear the foam is the <laughs> marketing lingo they used. Basically, uh, I emptied all the liquid out. I shook out a bunch of the foam. There's still some in there. That's okay. Not going to hurt anything and actually um, will act as a little bit of a yeast nutrient. Not that that's a reason to, you know, use it or whatever, but it's uh, not a big deal. So the next step is to dump my five gallons of water in here. And I, like I said, I just got spring water. You can use, if your tap water is not noticeably uh, chlorine -y. You can use that as well, but I just think this is a pretty convenient way to do it. So we'll hopefully time lapse here as I drip water all over myself. Right up to the five gallon mark on the Fermonster. Um, so I will get my other ingredient, uh, the kit over here, get these bottles out of here, get a sanitized pair of scissors, and we will brew. All right, so we have our Fermonster, three gallons of water in it. I screwed up and dumped five in after I sanitized this, so I, not ideal, bled two uh, gallons back off and I will dump them back in. So learn from my mistake, three gallons into the Fermonster first or your fermenter, then you dump the ingredients in, then add the last two gallons and that'll kind of mix things up. And I have a kind of bowl here with sanitized scissors, sanitized uh, lid, hose, all that other stuff. I won't bore you with all that, basically, 
Um, and where's my star sand? Okay, star sand in a spray bottle. <laughs> if I didn't mention that, sorry, I'm gonna cut this up a little bit. So some of this is redundant. Uh, hopefully it's not too bad. Okay, so they don't dictate the order in the instructions. I'm going to go with the malt extract first, I think. So we'll get, and the if you haven't used dry malt extract before, it can be a sticky mess. So you want to, what I try to do is get as much away from the top of the bag as possible. Got some ASMR plastic uh, bag noise going there. Um, okay, so that looks pretty good. And then you don't want to cut a bigger hole than you need to because as even moisture from the air kind of gets in here, this stuff starts to clump. And you want to get the best, uh, you know, the most uh, volume out of here that you can. Um, so I'm going to sanitize the corner of the bag I'm going to cut here a little bit. And then my scissors are sanitized already. So we're going to cut this. Uh, we'll just go maybe like this. See how that goes. <laughs> First time doing this. I mean, I've used DME before, but this is... Uh, all right, and we will go ahead and dump that in there. That looks pretty good for that opening. Um, sorry, I'm debating funnel. Eh, we'll just do it. Hopefully this won't get to be too much of a mess here. Yeah, it's going in nicely. Smells nice and sweet. And again, this is um, basically barley and a little bit of carapils from what's set on the bag, so. All right. All right, so that came out pretty nicely. I'm glad I didn't use the funnel. Probably would have made it worse. And, you know, you don't have to go too crazy here. Just get all out of there that you can. All right, so there's our extract. Let's set that in the sink for the moment. Um, okay, so next, uh, I, I'm going to go with the hops. Let's do this hop bite shot first. I've never used these before. So, yeah, since the there's a a uh, syringe in here. I'm not going to worry too much about sanitizing the top of the bag like I did with the DME since that's not going to touch it anyway. All right, so here is our syringe. Now, I don't think it said in the instructions if there's a tip on here. It looks like there is, or a lid, or that you cut it. It looks like it's just a lid that you pop off. And, yeah, there's 8 mils of 30 IBU um, hop shot in here. So that's designed to be to just give you a nice neutral, I'm assuming 30 uh, IBU uh, for a five gallon batch. So looks like you just pull this tip off. Yeah, tip just comes off and we're just gonna squirt that in here. Okay. Not much of an aroma too, I'm gonna. Oh yeah, okay. Smells like hops. I can't pinpoint, which is probably good for the generic uh, bittering hops that you want in here. And I, I don't mean generic in a bad sense. It's just, you know, for, for just to get some baseline bitterness, um, that's probably a good way to do it, especially for this um, type of brewing, which again, the idea is since you're not boiling, this stuff is supposed to just give you some bitterness with a out having, with, without A, having to boil, and B, uh, won't skunk um, if it's exposed to light. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I like the innovation of this stuff. It's interesting to me. Um, so, okay, next I'm going to dump the Citra Hops. These are Yakima Chiefs Cryo Citra Hops. 24 um, alpha acid, 2 ounces. So this I will sanitize the package a little bit just for a second. Star sand, technically, you know, you have... Uh, you're supposed to have a couple minutes of uh, contact time. Um, I'm going to cut or shortcut this a little bit just for the purposes of keeping this moving. And it's not as if, um, I don't know, the chances of your beer getting infected if, if you follow pretty good practices are fairly low. So I don't get hung up on little stuff like I need to wait two minutes for my 
if you're keeping everything clean, keep your hands clean, I got clean towels here, all this stuff is sanitized, it, it, it's likely gonna be fine. You wanna keep things as clean as possible, but don't, don't get too hung up. Uh, okay. Oh man, those, I love Citra so much. <laughs> it's kind of like, not as, it's not as hip as it used to be, but um, I still love Citra a lot. So, uh, okay, so that smells fantastic. We're gonna dump those in there. And you can see they're just kind of sitting on top there, which, um, so it is good that they, um, it is good that they uh, have you dump the last two gallons in after, that'll mix things up nicely. Sorry, it's, it's a rule, you have to uh, sniff the hot bag once you open it. Okay, <laughs> man, they're just really sitting on top of that uh, malt extract. But again, this stuff's gonna sit for two weeks. It'll all get, it'll all get uh, turned up. Okay, so what I'm gonna do next, um, actually, no, I'm gonna follow the instructions. We're gonna sanitize the top of this uh, yeast packet, and it does have a nice, uh, looks like you can just tear it off without even using scissors, which is kinda cool. So this again is the flash yeast. Nobody knows what it is. Possibly Kvike, maybe. Uh, it's designed to work with this, so I guess you, don't, you really don't care. Again, don't worry about it too much. Okay, so I'm just gonna see if it tears off nice and easy. It doesn't tear particularly easy. I don't wanna dump the yeast anywhere. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna use my scissors. I'm probably overly paranoid about uh, having it fly out all over the place, but... Uh, it would suck to lose the yeast. Okay, and same thing with, as with the DME, just kind of, sh you know, I like to tap stuff down to make sure you get a nice, um, uh, there's nothing in the part you're cutting off. Okay, looks like, looks like dry yeast. We'll dump it in there. Okay, and then the last step, dump two more gallons of water in there and we'll see how well this turns stuff up. And to kind of dump hard down the middle and make sure that stuff's getting mixed up. Okay, one more gallon of water. So you can see why you need, um, this is a seven gallon fermenter. This is a five gallon batch of beer, don't get a five gallon bucket. You need I'd say minimum six and a half um, because by the time you add all your ingredients in there and then as it ferments, you know, it'll shoot up uh, with the uh, croissant on top there. All right, so we got a little bit of a mess there. So um, that's the brewing process. Longer than 10 minutes because this is the, you know, new fermenter for me, new process, blah, blah, blah. But you can see if you're ready to go, just dumping the stuff in there takes no time at all. Okay, so the next step for me is I'm gonna grab my lid components. My lid is a little bit different. Um, I use a blow off tube instead of an airlock and I use a lid that um, has a ball lock gas post in it. So I'm gonna get that. Well, actually, I won't make you watch this. I'll show you the end result, but basically I'll put the gasket um, in this lid and this is again all in star sand so it's nice and sanitized. And star sand, after you give it a, few, a couple minutes, um, as long as the stuff is still wet, it's, it's still um, sanitary, sanitized. Um, I'll get that put together and we'll come back in a minute to see the end result. And there we have it in the fermentation chamber. So I can't even quite back up far enough to get the whole thing in there since that's a big fermenter. Larger than what I'm used to anyway. So, um, yeah, that was a pretty slick process, I gotta say. Uh, let me tape this down a little bit better. Well, I'll fix that later. But basically, um, and just to kind of go over, if um, you know, you've probably seen this uh, if you watch any of my videos, the lid setup I have going on. But basically, I have a blow-off tube instead of an airlock. Doesn't really matter. Um, just gives me a little bit of extra ability to do to keep it as oxygen-free as possible once you got it in the fermenter. Ideally, you don't open it again um, just to keep the beer fresh. Oxygen is beer's enemy once you get the yeast thrown in there. So uh, anyway, we will. I'm going to let this go for 14 days. I'm gonna uh, keep it temperature controlled at 68 Fahrenheit. Um, again, you can just do room temperature, totally fine. I'm, this is just the process I usually use for my other batches, so I figure I'll give it as good a shot as it can get uh, with a nice stable temperature with the uh, ink bird in here. And uh, we will see how the results come out in a couple of weeks. 
So was that a 10 minute brew day? Not for me since I was recording and I had a new fermenter and I was trying to explain as I went, I do things maybe a little bit more complicated than you actually need to, but it was a very short brew day. When you look at just the, the part where I was dumping the, you know, sanitizing the fermenter and dumping the uh, product, uh, the kit in there, the ingredients, that's a pretty short brew day. Um, the proof will be in the tasting, obviously. Um, I have high hopes because me personally, I don't think more beer would put out stuff like this if you didn't get pretty good results. Is it going to be the best beer you ever had? I don't know. Uh, I have a feeling it's going to be pretty decent, but we will find out in a couple weeks. But it's to me, this was fun. It's fun to try new stuff. Um, it made it super easy. You know, I can see, for example, um, you know, say you have you're going camping or you have an event coming up or whatever, and your schedule is just packed uh, until that happens. But you want to make some beer. You don't have to dedicate half a day or more of your life to brew some beer. You just do this and, you know, chances are this will come out good and people will enjoy it. And I think that can only be a good thing for the brewing world in general. But we'll see in the next video. I'll talk more about my thoughts about kind of, you know, who this is for, where it fits in, how, compare it to some other like quick brewing options that are out in the world. Uh, and we'll talk more when we do the tasting. Thanks for watching.